Welcome to the Wedding Obsessed Podcast, designed to help you plan your dream day. I'm your host, Adriana, and each week, I'm joined by the wedding industry's top professionals, celebs, influencers, and friends who share tips, trends, advice, and mistakes they've made so you don't have to. This is the Prenup Podcast. There are lots of designers synonymous with bridal shoes, such as Jimmy Choo, Badgley Mishka, and a brand that you have probably heard of that's gained such popularity in the U.S. in recent years called Charlotte Mills. They've been huge in the U.K. for a long time, but we were lucky enough to have Charlotte Mills on the podcast today, and she's such a talent. Her designs are so beautiful, and she talks about things that you should or shouldn't do when you're choosing your shoe, how to care for them, and just a little bit about her story. She's really talented and really interesting. Very excited to have her on and so honored she decided to. Before we get into the conversation, I just want to remind you to please leave us a review if you're loving the podcast. It's really, really helpful to me to produce the best episodes possible for you to help you plan your perfect wedding. If you do decide to leave a review, take a screenshot of it and send it to my email. That's adriana at the-pre-nup.com. I'll leave that below. And if you do send that review to me, you're going to be entered into a giveaway, monthly giveaway for the prenup bridal planner, which is a planner that's going to help you align all of your goals for the way you want to look and feel for your wedding. It's the easiest way to achieve all of your goals. It's really awesome. You can also shop that at the-pre-nup.com and check out all of the prenup socials linked below. Without further ado, here is Charlotte Mills. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, it's I'm really excited. It's it's good. It's something different, a bit different to the normal day in the office. But yeah, I'm not like the best at these kind of things. So <laughs> uh, start waffling on, you can cut me, cut me out a bit. <laughs> I bet you're better than you think, but we'll just get kind of right into it. Okay, so I, I met your team at New York Bridal Fashion Week back in yeah. April. And that was really exciting for me because I've been following you guys on socials forever. Um, Such a beautiful brand. And it was the first time I got to see the brand in person, which is really, really neat for me. Why do you think that your brand has become the premier bridal shoe brand? Other than obviously the styles being so beautiful, um, but people just seem to really connect with the brand. I think people love the the sentimental side of the brand. So each shoe has a sixpence, which is an old British coin in that. And that's to bring you good luck on your wedding day. And it's part of the phrase, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue, and a sixpence in her shoe. So we have the sixpence in the left shoe for luck. Um, and then on the sole, you'll find that phrase like inscribed into the leather. Um, so the something old is the coin, the something new is the shoe. The borrowed, we put an envelope inside the box. So after the wedding, the bride can send back a picture. Um, and then the something blue we have inside the shoe as well. So that all, all our aspects are covered. So I think brides love that. Um, and I think the brand's grown um, through word of mouth, really, because the shoes are so comfortable. They're all handmade in Spain and we're constantly improving the comfort. Um, so you'll find lots of padding, the super soft really lightweight and people will wear them for 12 hours don't have a blister and they're just like these are the most comfortable shoes ever so I think that's super important it's incredible and it's so rare because wedding shoes are notoriously uncomfortable so for you guys to come in with something that looks the way it does and feels the way it does on your foot is is really a game changer for brides because like you said you're in your shoes all day long it's from the time you're getting ready and you're doing your photos and then it's kind of just go, go, go. <laughs> yeah. And you stood up for most of the day. The last thing you want is to be uncomfortable. Yes. I think as well, we're quite popular with the block heels that we do. Um, brides love those. And we started with just one block heel like years ago, trying it out. And then now they're our main um, best selling like products. So yeah, I think block heels are the the way forward when you stood on, on your feet all day. It oh my gosh flexibility it's great if you're on grass or on cobbles um just really comfortable you mentioned um that famous rhyme it was something old something new something borrowed something blue which you know every every bride knows and loves it's you know a thing here in the states as well the one thing we i don't know why we don't do the six pence in the shoe but it's such a nice touch too and uh, it's, i think it is a very british tradition with it yeah. being six pence, which is a british coin it's not in circulation anymore so we have to buy like vintage coins oh wow i hope they never run out 
Oh my gosh. No, no. I hope you never run out either. We'll have to manufacture something otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you guys don't do just shoes, just wedding shoes anyway. I mean, you have, you have slippers and sneakers and purses. Yeah. yeah so we expanded um, into bags first. So we do like the little clutch bags for the evening of the wedding, or you can wear the shoes again. It's a great way of like tying an outfit together and re-wearing your wedding shoes for like anniversaries or on honeymoon yes. and that kind of thing. Um, and then it's developed from there really. So then we did the sneakers, which everyone loves. Um, I love, I, I'm on my third pair now. I keep wearing them, <laughs> all, wear them all the time. Um, and they're great again for the evening or for your bachelorette, for your honeymoon, for the airport. And you can wear them again and again after, after the wedding. Yeah, that's the great part because it's, something that you can change into and be comfortable, but it's commemorative. So, you know, whenever you wear them, it's kind of like, oh, these are my, these are my yeah. wedding shoes, but they can also be really fun. And they're sparkly as well, which is always good. It makes them a bit more like <laughs> evening wear and you can, they look great with the short dresses. And then we recently have launched our, like, we call it Hen in the UK, but I know it's Bachelorette in the US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like doing unbelievable. It's not actually on the US website at the moment. We just sell it in the UK, but we are going to be bringing it over in the next um, month or so. And we're expanding that range quite a bit. So we'll have a full collection of everything really. From Oh my gosh, that's exciting. Yeah, from suits to dresses. So at the moment we just do the dresses. Um, they're like hand beaded, um, really beautiful dresses and we we just had we just had a restock so yeah we've got enough stock now so we can stock the US website as well oh my gosh I can't wait to see that when is that coming out so we're hoping to, to sort of sort it out in the next few weeks um wow. getting the stock over there so within the next month probably it should be live on on the website that's and that's so exciting. an area we're really growing because we find like it's such a big trend at the moment like people want to make the most of every event of the wedding from like the bachelorette to the rehearsal the second look so we want to be in there with like charlotte mills quality but the price to be affordable luxury so people can afford up to splurge and, and get a dress that they love yeah um, and the styling is is designed to, to feel comfortable and but look look amazing yeah. Oh my God. It's every girl's dream. And that yeah. is something I noticed too, just, you know, in trends, especially at fashion week, a lot of the styles are bridal wear, not necessarily, you know, evening gowns. So everyone wants kind of, like you said, something to go with their hand or bachelorette or for their shower and the looks to kind of be cohesive, um, you know, in that bridal realm, because you want to milk that experience. You want to feel yeah. like a bride the whole time. So, you know, it's all white, everything, which is really fun and we want the sparkles. Um, but we also want to maybe play around with things. So where some brides will do maybe like a, something mini or a pantsuit on the day, some brides want to be more traditional, but they want to play with those looks on other times. Yeah, and I think we we know our customer really well, and we we asked um, on social on our Instagram quite a lot when we were developing the range, like what people wanted, what they were looking for, the price point. So yeah, we've used that information, developed the range, and it was just a small range of just three dresses originally. Okay. Um, we've got two new dresses which are dropping over the next few weeks, and then in January we're going to launch like a huge collection. Um, so that's in, in the works at the moment, which is, is really fun. And it's obviously I'm a shoe girl. I love shoes, but it's nice to do something um, different and like expand the brand. Yes, absolutely. Oh my gosh. So what do you think right now is the biggest trend in bridal shoe? So for us, um, people love the block heels. Like I said before, they're, they're super popular, but pearls, like anything that we have a pearl on is a bestseller. Like people just obsessed with pearls pearls are so huge right now they are everywhere <laughs> yeah and we've had them now for like in in the collection for a few years but we we're developing new ways and new new trims and things to for people that are a bit more minimal but still want some extra detailing um so we've got some new styles in the works and we've got new styles that hit in the u.s site that are selling well in the uk again over the next the next few months 
Oh my gosh. That's so exciting. It's expanding so fast. <laughs> yeah. I feel like in the U S we're just such like a new brand, um, but we're really established in the UK. So it's yeah. just like starting, starting from scratch really, but yeah, we're seeing it grow each month, which is brilliant. And we hope that that continues and just like spreading the word. But I think the more brides that wear the shoes and realize how comfortable they are, that's like how we grew the brand initially in the UK. And I think that's how it'll happen in the US as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you guys did recently a collaboration with Gown Eyed Girl. Yeah. So can you talk about that a little bit? That was so much fun. It was great. And it was, it was great for me to design shoe, a shoe for someone. Like I designed the shoes for like our bride and who like we feel like we know them quite well. Whereas Kennedy's style is quite different to just like our general styling of the collection. So it was fun to come up with some new ideas, like with Kennedy in mind. And she loves like vintage inspired things and the slim heel, which we don't do a lot of as well. Um, so yeah, that was that was a great experience and she was great to work with. And we had a she came, actually came over to the UK to shoot the the um collection and we've worked at, at Bridal Week together. So yeah, it's been it's been really fun and it's something different. We've never done anything like that before, but I loved it and I definitely love to do do that kind of thing again. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I was gonna ask if we can look forward to any future collaborations. Yeah, like we've got a few like people that we're talking to at the moment and hopefully we can do another gown eyed girl collaboration. Um, oh, that would be great. And for anyone who hasn't seen that, can you describe a little bit of what it looks like? The gown eyed yeah, girl collab? Um, like when Kennedy got married, she had vintage shoes that had all like pleating on them. So we, we incorporated some pleating. So it's like a point toe with a V, a v throat detail. Um, one side's all pleated the other side smooth um, and she wanted a shoe that was easy to slip on and off for when she's doing reels and filming content and um, so it's a slingback which again we don't do a lot of so that was quite a different silhouette for us with a really thin sleek um, setback heel and the pointy toe so it's a very elegant glam shoe absolutely love it and um, I've got a pair of them in black as well oh really <laughs> yeah oh. I got for the, for bridal week, I asked the factory to make me a pair in, in black suede and they go with a, absolutely everything. They're just like the perfect work, work shoe. Oh, how cool is that? I love that. Yeah. They're really, really beautiful. So definitely looking forward and it's definitely more of a classic vibe. And that seems to be, um, uh, very on trend as well. Like, you know, classic is the new trendy. Um, yeah. but what would you say is maybe either your best selling shoe or just a style that's like very, very classic kind of lasts through every trend that comes and goes? So there's, there's one that I'd say is like really on trend at the moment and that's yeah. the Libby Pearl. Um, and that's just arrived in the US. Um, it's like um, a scallop detail sandal, mm -hmm. quite elegant, quite minimal because it's it's strappy um, and it's very tonal and smooth. Um, so that one's like been our bestseller from the new collection. And then in the US, the best selling shoe, it's called Juniper. And that's um, an almond toe. So it's really soft. It's like in between a point and a round toe. And it suits everyone with a high block heel. And it's crushed glitter. So but like a matte pearl finish. <laughs> and on this shoe, you can have um, just like the simple ankle strap or you can swap it out for an organza ribbon, which looks so elegant when it's like tied in a, in a bow on, on the side. So I'd say they're the, the two, one's like the best seller at the moment. And then the other one is the best seller in the US. Um, okay. One of the first shoes we, we opened with um, when we opened the website over there. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone check those out for sure. So for us here, especially, you know, in the Northeast, um, a very popular season for weddings is going to be, you know, our May, June, June weddings, I think across the board are super popular, yeah. but also September, October. So, you know, those nicer seasons, is it similar in the UK as well? Yeah, very similar. Yeah. yeah. We found like a, a real split in the US. Like we have like, seem to have like a lot of orders coming in through from LA and then also from like New York and that kind of area as well. So sure. hopefully like in LA, like the seasons might be a bit different than like it'll, it'll work its way at, around. So it's just like busy all year round. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. LA and, you know, Florida and some of the States that, you know, get the warmer months all year round definitely tend to, um, 
have weddings through the year, but most of what I see is, you know, those, those nicer months, people tend to yeah. not shy away from July and August, but it's more so those like really nice May, June, September, October. So with that in mind, a lot of times people will do an outdoor ceremony and or reception. So yeah. is there a best style that you could recommend to someone who's doing an outdoor wedding? I think going for the block heels because you're on grass, you're not going to sink into the grass. You're stable like on the uneven surfaces, like the gravel, yes. you don't want to damage your shoes. Like you have a really thin stiletto heel and you're walking on grass or gravel, you can really damage the, the heel yeah. and the, the cover in there. And yeah, I'd say something like that. And I think open toe is a good choice to keep okay. cool when it's warm as well. But the shoes, the leather shoes do really help with that and keep your feet quite cool. Okay, good to know. <laughs> um, so what's the best way that you could recommend to care for your shoes before or after wearing them? So um, our shoes have like protective film on the sole, which we tell brides to leave on. So if you, you, you know, your fittings are you wearing them around the house, it'll keep the sole pristine. So you can get that shot of the underneath the nice detailing in the morning on the wedding day. And, um, but then remove the sole protector. Um, and then really like the shoes, they're all natural materials. So you can just wipe them down and try and keep them dry and make sure that they're, they're completely dry. If you, if you're married on like um, a rainy day, you yes. need to make sure the shoes are dry before you put them in the box. Yes. Oh, it's, it's so important. It's something that, you know, you don't think, oh, let me dry off my shoes, but it's, yeah. you know, it's I good to it remember. Four years ago when I opened the box and the shoes had all got moldy inside. So yeah, you need to make sure, cause it's leather. It needs to be, it needs to be hundred percent dry and then pack it, package them back up with all the tissue paper and things before you put them away. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Um, so because your shoes are so comfortable, um, maybe you won't have as much insight to this, but I'll ask anyway, and not just for comfort, but do you have any shoe tips or hacks to maybe last the whole day or, you know, make sure you're getting the most out of your wedding shoes? Yeah. So I always um, say it's good to put on like a pair of socks and wear the shoes just so they'll stretch like a tiny bit bigger than they need to be and then on the day if your feet swell you've got that little bit of extra room in there but yeah I'd, I'd say that really in all the shoes that I've ever worn that, that you know that from Charlotte Mills from our collection I've never had a blister ever that's amazing and that's actually such a good tip with the socks I've never heard that one so that's that's really great yeah but again I mean you've created this brand with comfort in mind and style um, yeah. and it's so rare. So I think it's very greatly appreciated. <laughs> yeah, you, you thank you. <laughs> I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. So I always like to ask, uh, just a couple fun questions for you. So I'm sure you deal with a lot of brides and see a lot of brides and yeah. uh, maybe attend a lot of weddings as well. So what is your dream cake flavor? Wedding cake. <laughs> Lemon drizzle, I'd say. Oh, lemon everybody loves a lemon I do too it's delicious but <laughs> I love cake though that is my like dream dream meal is a piece You're of cake, cake girl <laughs> yeah yeah cake and tea <laughs> oh my gosh sounds amazing <laughs> that's what I want right now so at a wedding what song is going to get you up on the dance floor what song do you have to hear I'd say I always love a bit of Mariah Carey or Whitney Houston I think they get that that gets everyone up Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You play dance with somebody and you know, yeah, no one's going to be sitting. That was my karaoke song. <laughs> was it really? karaoke, but oh. um, yeah, I'm <laughs> absolutely terrible, but it's still fun. That's a great choice. I love that choice. The worse you are at karaoke, the more fun and the better it is. Actually, yeah. I, I, think think. The, I think the private rooms are quite good when at least it's only your friends I have to put up with um, listening to your terrible voice. Absolutely. I mean, when you go to karaoke, you don't want to listen to someone who's, who sounds like Mariah Carey. It's like, gosh, this isn't even fun anymore. You know, <laughs> you have to have fun with it. Um, so for honeymoons, what is your top recommended honeymoon destination? So for my honeymoon, we went to Mexico and that was incredible. I'd love to go back there. Um, Where in Mexico did you go? Playa del Carmen. Oh, nice. And we stayed in like a boutique hotel right on the beach and the food was just incredible. And it was just like, yeah, it was just such a good trip. 
Um, and then I've also been to the Maldives as well, which I would recommend that to anyone. It's like a once in a lifetime experience. It's stunning and magical. So yeah, I'd pick one of those two places most probably. Okay. Yeah. So I've never been to the Maldives. Of course, you know, it's always a, a top recommendation because it's so gorgeous. So yeah. is there a lot that you can do there other than, you know, I mean, if you're looking to just relax in the most gorgeous yeah. place ever, that's great too. Yeah. For me, I just love just to lie and do nothing and just yeah. even there's a lot of like trips that you can go on like go and see the sea turtles or see the dolphins and things like that yeah, but yeah it is very if you like to be active it's probably not the, the best place to go <laughs> okay okay good to know <laughs> yeah, I'm amazing at relaxing so yeah that's the perfect, <laughs> the perfect location <laughs> okay and then what is one piece of advice that you could give to any engaged couple? For me, I think it's so important to find the right photographer and like gel with them. And I, when I got married, the photographer, like I didn't really do any research. It was just like, oh, let's just book a photographer. But now after being in the industry for so long and working with so many amazing photographers, I feel like they're, they're the memories you can look back and look at the photos. So you need to make sure you find someone whose style you love and who you get on with well so you feel comfortable and they feel like part of the event not just you know on the outside yeah definitely it's it's what you're going to look back on on your day it's the only memories if you don't do video but your photos yeah. are really what you refer back to when you hang in your home so you're right it's yeah. a super important thing to do yeah and I think that like now it's quite popular to do like a pre-wedding shoot yeah yeah so I think if it was me I'd feel like oh that's so awkward and cringe <laughs> and I hate it but it's actually such a good idea so you you've already got it out of the way and you feel relaxed then and then the next time you see the photographer at the wedding you 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 feel more comfortable yeah definitely because your average person doesn't spend a lot of time in front of a professional camera and yeah. it could be really awkward but like oh stand this way but having that session beforehand like you said really gets you comfortable not only with the photographer but on your wedding day you're gonna have cameras in your face you know all day so getting a little more comfortable with that is super helpful yeah yeah so charlotte see it's it was nice and easy and yeah. i've shared everywhere that we can find you guys on social and your website it was so so helpful i really appreciate you coming on thanks, thanks. Bye. take care bye-bye